Philippians chapter number 4, as we look again tonight at that tremendous passage from Philippians chapter number 4, last week, I began to break apart this passage and I looked at that verse number 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. We looked at that concept, uh, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And I begin to open up this idea that we're supposed to think on these things. There is a battle going on, raging for space in our minds, real estate in our minds. It is a battle. It is not a light battle. It is not an easy battle, but it is a battle. Anyone who says otherwise is deceiving themselves. Now, what you may struggle with and what I may struggle with may be entirely different. We're going to look at the next word in this verse tonight, maybe get beyond that. But each word kind of overlaps, but brings a different nuance to the conversation. I got home, I think it was last night, and my kids were outside having a Nerf war. I don't know about your house, but we allow Nerf wars in our house. Usually they're inside, and uh, I have a couple of Nerf guns myself. You say, Pastor, do you play Nerf wars with your kids? You better believe it. I've got... More bullets than they have, at least I think they have some of mine now, I have more bullets than my kids have, and uh, mine are always cocked and loaded. You never know in my house when you're going to be attacked. Even my wife has been guilty of saying they're cooking and all of a sudden pulling out a Nerf gun and shooting somebody. This is the way the house operates. All right? It's the way it should operate, okay? And uh, just, you know, uh, how intense are those fights, Pastor Howell? Well, I remember uh, uh, maybe last time or two times ago, inside the house, we have some of those smart lights. I turned them all to red in the house, turned off all the other lights, and then I played like some scary music in the background. It was pretty intense. I about wet my britches myself. No, I didn't. But I come home and I see the kids are out by the trees. They're having a little Nerf war there. And uh, I watched them. And they're each behind a separate tree aiming, you know, with a gun pointed around the tree. They didn't know that I saw them. And then, and then they saw me pull up. And about a minute or so later, they all came inside. And they began to tell me about this Nerf war that they had outside. And how, you know, Danielle had shot James. And James had shot Johnny. And I got shot here. And Daddy, I got hit here. And boy, they're laughing and giggling. Boy, just a fun battle out there in the Nerf war. I'm afraid sometimes, though, that we attribute the battle of the mind... And pretend it's like a Nerf war. You see, in a Nerf war, we have a good time together. I shoot you, you shoot me, and I fall down and play dead. Then I pop back up and we go at it again. And that's not the way the battle of the mind is supposed to operate. Now, Paul, to this conversation to the Philippians in this letter, says, here is a list of things, here is a list of qualities of thoughts that you are to allow in your mind and anything else is not to be permitted. Think on these things. He doesn't say, well, if there's other things, you can add them. He says, no, no, he says, think on these things. So I have a different illustration tonight to begin the service. Don't worry. I have written in my notes again to finish my trial courtroom jury illustration. It is there. And if you saw me walk back up on the stage after the time to send a picture, and it was Johnny, who I thought was coming just to give me a hug, he in fact was saying, Daddy, don't forget, to, was it Johnny, right? Don't forget to finish the illustration, okay? And so uh, uh, that, that is what is going to happen. Um, but, so it's in there, so don't worry, it is, it is planned there, just like last week, but you know, who knows what will happen? Uh, last week, I just forgot. It wasn't anyone else's fault, I'm not blaming the Lord, it was my fault, I forgot it. But I have a different illustration tonight. I thought of a different game that would maybe better illustrate what happens in our mind and our attitude toward it. I have been guilty and, and been known to go visit an arcade before. I know, I know. Yes, in the, some of, you know, I want to confess my sins before all. I've even enjoyed arcades, I must say that. But there was an old game in an arcade. I mean old, old game. Newer than like maybe Pac-Man, but old game. And it was called... Whack a mole. Do you remember Whack a Mole? You, you stood before this little thing. I mean, the other games had lights and dazzling. And the Whack a Mole was a little, a little station about like this, right? With some holes in it, maybe nine holes or so. And, and periodically, this little plastic shaped mole would pop up and you would have a hammer. I mean, this is a game of all games. 
You take that hammer that you could not walk away because it had like a string or a chain on it. You remember what I'm talking about? And you'd whack them all, right? And you'd whack it here and you'd whack it here and, and you'd try to be really fast, right? Bam, 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 bam. You know, and pretty soon you started whacking all over the place, or at least I did, anticipating one popping up. Well, it'd behoove us to play whack a thought. Can you say that with me? Whack a thought. Because God, through the inspiration, his inspiration of his word, has given us some things that have no place, no real estate in our minds. Well, I've got it beyond that. I brought something else with me, though. I brought a hammer with me. Now, now this, this, though, doesn't really capture it. I tried to find Thor's hammer. You know, the one you can't pick up in real life, but in, you know, oh, you know what I'm talking about, right? And, and, and this one, it's, it's a Fisher Price. I, I have to be honest, I, I had Pastor Ryan uh, rob a toy out of the nursery. We will carefully disinfect it. And, and I would use this to illustrate whack a thought tonight, but it just feels like it's a little bit shallow and plastic, right? Right? You don't feel like it just doesn't quite capture the demo. Let me whack my thoughts away. Okay, here I go. All right, like it won't do too much damage. So I brought something else with me tonight. I'd say wait there, but you're in your house and so you don't have a choice. Can we play Amen. whack a thought tonight? This, this, my friends, will do some damage. Six pound sledgehammer. Six pounds. This will do some damage. You don't want to drop this on your big toe without shoes on, right? This will cause you to question whether you love Jesus or not right here. You don't want to drop this on a nice plate at home because then your wife will question whether you love Jesus or not. This is a six-pound sledgehammer. Tonight, with God's help, as we look at Philippians chapter 4, let put this right here. Verse 8, tonight again, will challenge us to play... Whack a thought, using God's word as a foundation and as a guide by which we determine which thoughts need to be whacked. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the truth that you bring to us. Lord, I pray these next few moments you'd help me to clearly uh, bring and, and, and uh, communicate your truth from your word. But Lord, beyond that, would you take your word and make it clear in our hearts through the conviction and the teaching of your Holy Spirit. Lord, there may be some, some areas in our minds that we have some battles that we've not yet whacked. Well, maybe we've been playing around like a Nerf or using a little plastic hammer. But Lord, would you give us the victory tonight? Help us to have the clarity to see things like you see them. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. If you would look at Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8, familiar verse, but we'll look at it again. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, say those last words with me, please. Think on these Things. Did you catch that? Think on these things. I mean, nothing else is permitted. Think on these things, those things that pass the test of this, this, this truth from God's Word. And last week we looked at that first one, what things are true. We reject what is false. Sometimes our mind plays tricks with us. Our minds can create situations that would not be true. And tonight, if I can, as we look at this word honest, I want to give you a statement, maybe help you remember this. The statement is this, don't allow your mind, don't allow those thoughts to waste the space. Don't allow thoughts to waste the space. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true and whatsoever things are honest. And you say, well, well, pastor, it seems like the word honest is a lot like the word truth. And I'm going to carry this sledgehammer again so you don't forget what game we're playing. And if my son falls asleep, I'll wake him back up again. I am just kidding. 
But what you say, well, that word looks like, honest, looks like it would be very similar to truth. And like I mentioned, these words all have a shade of, of difference and nuance. And they all a little bit overlap each other as we continue down this list. And the word truth deals with, with error versus that which is true. The word honest is a little different idea. And the word honest here has to deal with what is honorable or what is becoming and so what this, what this word is teaching us is not only do we avoid things that are untrue, but we avoid things, we whack things that are not becoming of a Christian or the way a Christian should think. They are not considered in this context to be honest or honorable. Now, what, let me explain that a little bit. So if there was a nice lady that came up on the stage with me and she was dressed beautifully in a nice dress and, a, and a beautiful hair and makeup, and as I handed her a microphone, she began to curse and to swear. We would say, well, that speech is not very becoming of a lady. It doesn't match what she is saying, does not match how she looks. Yeah. If I were to walk up here in a suit and tie, not that I'm nice looking, but if well, I walk in a suit and tie and say, hey, yo, dog, what's up? You say, well, that's weird. That doesn't quite match. All right, what you're saying doesn't match what I see. And what God is bringing to us is the idea that not only do we discard, or whatever do we whack things that are untrue, but we need to whack some things, we need to whack the thoughts that are not becoming of a Christian. I say, okay, Pastor, I can do that. I, I know some things, and, and, um, but I want to direct our minds to a few areas tonight and things that don't become a Christian. In regards to the idea of not wasting the space. Don't waste the space. You see, there are some things that can waste space in my mind that are still true, but they're not becoming of a Christian. Someone who is a child of God. Someone who is saved. For instance, let me help you here. For instance, um, a few years back, I was researching something else to buy. Now, if you know me well, you know that I am a researcher. And when I say research, I know there's somebody out there right now who we've talked about this, and you're right on target with me. What I mean by I'm a researcher is, if I'm going to buy something, let's say I'm going to buy a new power tool, and it's going to be a new Milwaukee, maybe a screwdriver. Every man needs power tools. Amen. For what? For something. They're, they're handy. Then I want to be handy, so I must have power tools. But let's say I'm going to buy a new, a new power tool. I will look it up on Amazon.com, Amazon. It'll have 3,241 reviews, and I, I can read every single one. I want to know about this tool. After I get done reading all those reviews, I can then watch 16 different YouTube reviews of this same tool. I'll find out that if you use this tool underwater and apply 64 torque pound or pounds of torque to it, uh, it may not function properly in this setting under 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, boy, you don't know if I want this one. I might have to get a different one. But the Lord touched my heart about that a couple years back, and he said, you are wasting time. Now, I want to be a good steward. I don't want to make frivolous or bad choices. I don't have an endless supply of money like maybe some of you do. All right, I have to be careful what I spend, that, and I don't want to waste the resources that God has given to me. But I realized the Lord convicted me that in my mind, though it was not untrue, all right, it wasn't a matter of truth or error, it was not becoming a Christian. It was wasting space in my mind. Yeah. It was not honorable. All right? And the Bible word there is honest. Okay. All right? Three other times in, in, in the scripture, this New Testament, this word is translated as grave or sincere. All right? A servant of the Lord must be grave. It's honorable. What, what becomes a Christian? See, as a Christian, the other thoughts ought to dominate my mind. How about this? Like thoughts about Easter Sunday and the lost out there. Yeah. All right, that needs a whole lot more real estate in my mind than some power tool I'm about to buy. Right? I'm talking about wasting the space. And while I want to be a good steward, I don't want to be guilty of wasting the space in my mind. I want to think on things that are honorable. If not, I've got to whack it. No matter how many times it pops up its ugly little head. I don't want to waste the space with frivolous and light thoughts well you say well pastor i'm a lady i don't care about power tools you're tr you're right 
You're right. Many of you don't. Now, some of you will. I don't want to, I'm not trying to just stereotype genders right now. I'm just making, uh, I'm just getting myself in a big hole. I get it. I understand. But I realize that sometimes ladies I've known, a few, not too many, but a few I've known who become so involved in something that they're watching, maybe been watching a show, that it dominates their thinking. And it's not that perhaps the show is ungodly or sinful. That that would be the truth one, right? And it's not that it's unpure. That comes later on in the verse. But it all kind of overlap. We're just talking about that it's not becoming a Christian. It shouldn't dominate my thoughts and my thinking. It's not honorable. It's not honest. It's not sincere. It's not becoming of a Christian. You see, I'm supposed to be careful what I allow in my mind is honest reputable and becoming of a Christian Man. and and so quickly I think you can understand how in your mind or my mind how quickly those thoughts can begin to pop up right. and I give them real estate because I can easily justify any thought process yes. right I, I can justify this while I'm just relaxing I'm just enjoying myself but if I'm not careful I'm allowing these thoughts that ought to be whacked to dominate space and they're wasting space in my mind. The Bible teaches me not to waste the space to become, have thoughts and become a Christian. It goes beyond that. There are times, and the Bible references later on, that sometimes it is even random biblical thoughts. And I use that word biblically, and I'll explain that so you understand what I'm saying. There are people that ask this, well, did Adam have a belly button? I really, really, really need to know whether Adam had a belly button or not. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know. I could argue for it. I could argue against it. At the end of the day, it doesn't particularly matter. It doesn't change salvation. It doesn't change service. And it doesn't change sanctification. Like that three S's right in a row. All right? It doesn't matter. It is a waste of of space and that's what Paul says in Titus uh, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and content contentions and strivings about the law for they are this is Bible right now unprofitable and vain well get that there are some things that that Paul says to Titus all right he says listen avoid these things because they're unprofitable that means that, that I can't waste space. I've got to make sure they're honest. They have to be worthy of space in my mind, not unworthy. Sometimes, sometimes, I get crazy thoughts. You ever get crazy thoughts? I mean, things that come out of nowhere. There, there's no doubt in my mind that sometimes those thoughts are fiery darts of the devil. Right, the shield of faith defeats the fiery darts. But, but there can be thoughts that, that will come into your mind. Yes. Thoughts that God doesn't love me. Yes. You cannot allow that thought to waste the space in your mind. Amen. God doesn't care. It goes beyond that in relation to God. It'll go in relation to other people. That's why I got the question early on that, well, pastor, are you going to change what Bible we use and change from the King James Version? That, my friends, is a crazy thought. If I had said this, we're going to change the Bible we use, then that would not be a crazy thought. But I have never said that. All right? I have never thought that. That would be a crazy thought. Yet, that was a question that was given. Or the thought I told you before, someone asked once early on, well, pastor, aren't you going to put a drum set on the stage? That, my friends, is a crazy thought. Yeah. I went through this in the music time. No, no. And, and I, I received that question. Well, well why, would you, why, would you ask, why would somebody ask that? Well, because sometimes we get crazy thoughts in our head. Right. I can't begin to, to think of all the crazy thoughts that you may have in your head. I know mine. I, I heard of one time when the lady was convinced that her husband was leaving her. He had given zero, zero reasons for her to think that. He was not unfaithful. He was not in any way doing anything incorrectly. 
But it was a crazy thought. I'm calling it a crazy thought. I'm not saying she was crazy, but you know what I'm talking about? Those thoughts that come in our head, they're like, whoa, where did that come from? That came out of left field. Anybody ever had those in here? Come on, at home, raise your hand up. Okay, I've had them. Don't let it waste the space. Those things that are honest and honorable. So I'm in, I'm in the jury room. I came back to it, I remember. I'm in the jury room, sitting there in the morning, got there, driven my Lincoln Town car up, and a black one at that time. Lincoln Town car that when I sold, I didn't buy a motorcycle, but that's the one before, that's a different story. <laughs> sitting in the, in, the, in the room, I was the, they elected me to be the foreman of the jury, I don't know why, I was 26, rooms, doctors, lawyers, couple teachers. And all of a sudden, the bailiff comes in the room and he says, uh, the judge, so-and-so, needs to see Mr. John Howell. Calls my name. I got, I got to be honest with you. I still remember, uh, not completely, but, but a lot of that sinking feeling. I, it's kind of like when those lights go on behind you. All right? It doesn't matter if you're doing right or wrong. It's just, who, you know, what, what have I done? As I'm walking with the bailiff toward the courtroom, they leave the room like all the looks. All right? From people. And you've probably experienced this before. It happens at school sometimes. Instantly, anyone who was friendly is no longer friendly. Like, oh. I always knew there's something weird about that guy, right? Yeah, I, I, I knew, I could see that guy. A little gasp in the room, you know, what, what, did, what did, you know, John Howell do now? I'm walking with the bailiff and, uh, and my mind is running a thousand miles an hour, okay? There was so much space wasted in my mind at that time. I'm, I'm thinking of everything, like, like, what have I done? Like, why am I going to the courtroom? I, you know, I, I'm going to jail. I'm getting locked up for 50 years. I'm probably, I'm probably having the death penalty on me. Right? That's how our minds work, or at least sometimes my mind works that way. Maybe yours doesn't. I walk into the courtroom, and the, the judge is there. Behind is, uh, whatever, big, big judge place. And there's the defense attorney. Her, the judge... And me. He says, Mr. Howell, yes, sir, would you please step up here? So step up. It's just him, her, me. Now, my mind was going a thousand miles an hour. Somehow my mind find a way to, to go into overdrive at that time. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm done. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I did, but now, now I have an attorney like, you know, and I think I must have like influenced. I, I didn't know what happened. That's what our minds do. Mine does sometimes. If I don't bring into captivity, if I don't whack a thought. See, what happened, Pastor Howell? I should finish the story. I should just let you go and be praying and be done. No, no. No, no. He then asked me, he said, hey, he said, Mr. Howell, he said, um, did you ride up in the elevator with Mrs. or Miss so-and-so? I realized that that morning when I got to the courtroom, I stepped in the elevator and the defense attorney was stepping at the same time, so I held the elevator and she stepped in next to me into the elevator. And she and I rode alone in the elevator to the third, I think it's the third floor of that courthouse, the federal courthouse in Bay City. I didn't think about it twice. I don't know that there are rules about that, but there are rules about that. He said, did you ride alone in the elevator? Now I'm thinking, oh boy. <laughs> Lord have mercy on my soul. <laughs> I said, yes sir, I did. Then he proceeded to, to reprimand the defense attorney. He asked me, he said, after he it, talked to her for a second, he said, Mr. Howell, he goes, did she try to influence you in any way, shape, or form? And I realized very quickly that I wasn't the one in trouble. <laughs> that I'm fine. I'm part of the jury. And, and, and it, it, all, it, was, it was like I was protected in that. And that he was making sure she didn't try to tamper with the jury and with the jury foreman. I said, no, sir, she didn't. She said, good morning, and, and that was it. She didn't talk about the case to you at all, Mr. Howell, did she? He's like pointing at me. All right, well, now, now my mind real quick jumped tracks and knew exactly which way this was going. Right, you know, your mind does that when you see, when the Lord shows a little bit of light there. Oh, and I'm in a dead sweat at that time, so like, you know how that happens. I said, oh, no, sir, you know, he said this. She didn't talk to you about the case. Ask me three to five times the same question, but different ways. 
shouldn't do this, didn't do this, didn't do this. No, sir, no, sir, no, sir. He looks at her, gives her just a, and she said, I'm sorry, Mr. I'm sorry, Judge. I did not realize it was a jury foreman. I mean, she is bending over backwards, jumping back down, apologizing left and right. Right, and now I'm like, oh yeah. Just, <laughs> inside, not on the outside. Still shaking on the outside. Then he said, Thank you, Miss Child. You go back to the to, to the jury. I'll go back into the room. <laughs> You know, they're surprised I guess I'm still alive. You know, they thought for sure I was getting taken to, to, to the electric chair. You know, what happened? What happened? I shared what I shared with you. I said, oh, wow. You know, oh, boy. You know, because we've all seen those shows, right? You know, where they kill the jury, where they, they pay the jury in the, in the elevator on the way up. I mean, we're all part of those. We've seen those dramas on TV. My point is this. I think you get it. My mind was way over there. Way over there. Based on what? Nothing. Based on nothing. Nothing. It wasn't true, and it wasn't becoming of a Christian. I am called to walk by faith. Faith says, you know what? No matter what happens, my God is still in control. So whack those thoughts out of there. Uh, faith, faith says, no matter what I need, God will supply my need. So whack those thoughts out of there. And don't allow thoughts that have no place in the space to dominate. Don't let them waste the space. But have a mind that lines up with Philippians 8, where he says, think on these things. Lord, I thank you for your word. And I thank you for truth from your word. Lord, I'd ask you to help us. Well, you know, as I speak about this, I'm speaking as much to myself as to anyone else. Lord, I want my mind to be centered on your word. Lord, I only want things in my mind that would glorify you, that would line up with what's true and what's honest. Lord, help us. I wonder whether you're here tonight in the auditorium, whether you're at home. If maybe the Holy Spirit touched your heart tonight, maybe you've allowed some thoughts to waste some space. I'm not saying they're not true thoughts. They may just be a waste of space, not worthy of what a Christian's called to. Would you let God work in your heart? And I wonder if you're listening to the sound of my voice tonight. And I wonder if you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. We want you to know that, and I want you to know that God loves you. He loves you so much, he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. The Bible says, but God commended, he showed his love for us. That while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that if you trust in Jesus Christ, he will save you from your sins. If you know that you're a sinner, admit that you're a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, if you've never believed on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to save you from your sins, would you do that tonight? Sometimes we help someone who wants to trust Christ to pray a simple prayer. It's not in the magic of the words you say. But the heart man believeth, with a mouth confessions made. And the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and rose again the third day. Would you save me and take me to heaven? I trust Jesus and him alone. Would you pray that? Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Tell him he'll hear you. I know I deserve to pay for my sin, but I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. He was buried and rosy in the third day. Would you save me and take me to heaven? And I trust Jesus and him alone. The Bible says that if you prayed that and meant that from your heart, that you are saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, I thank you for your truth. 
Lord, I pray that if someone who's listening tonight who's never trusted you as their Savior, Lord, would you help them to trust you tonight? Lord, help us to have minds that would please you and centered on those things that would line up with your word. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen.